Our next major focus treats the analysis and design of circuits containing active devices, such as transistors or operational amplifiers, or op amps for short. An active device is a component that requires an external power supply to operate correctly. An active circuit is one that contains one or more active devices. An important property of active circuits is that they are capable of providing signal amplification. So some of the examples as mentioned before of active devices are transistors which acts as a current amplifier and an operational amplifier which simulates many mathematical operations such as integration, differentiation, adder, subtractors, etc. Linear active circuits is governed by the following proportionality property where Y is the output, KX where K is a constant, some operation, in this case it's a scalar multiplier times X which is our input. On the other hand, passive resistance circuits don't produce voltage, current, or power amplification or gains greater than one. Only when you supply power to an active device will you get a gain greater than one. Usually linear active devices are modeled using resistors and one or more dependent sources. So what is a dependent source? A dependent source is a voltage or current source controlled by a voltage or current in a different part of a circuit. We usually denote a dependent source with this symbol here of a diamond. So let's look at some examples of dependent source circuit symbols. Here's one where we have a current at our input and we have this so this is a current controlled so our current is our input voltage source and that's our output so this output voltage source is controlled by an input current source shown here so the one in black for the, on the left side will denote our some type of source controlling this dependent sort shown in red. So in this case once again this is a current controlled based on this input voltage source. Our next example is we'll change instead of a current a voltage. So here we have a voltage controlled and again this is due to our input voltage source at our output port. Alright and following along these lines we have now current sources at our output for this example shown and this example. So here in this case we have at our input is a current controlled current source. Again, the first two letters represents our input and the last two letters represents what type of source is the output. And then finally, we have a voltage at our input and a current at our output. So this is a voltage controlled current source. So let's look at this proportionality factors R, mu, beta, and G. That is, we have Y is equal to kx where x is our input, y is our output, and k is our proportionality factor or parameters. So in each type of dependent source that we just covered there are several parameters of this proportionality constant. Here we define R is resistance because our output is a voltage and our current is an input. So this is like a gain V over I which has a which we call the gain of R. Now let's look at our output here and it's a voltage output and a voltage input so this is just a dimensionless parameter we call mu and that's our gain for this type of dependent source and usually this is a model for an operational amplifier which we'll dis discuss later. Here we have our current as our output and a current as an input. So this is like a current gain in which we denote it as beta. 
and usually this is a model for a transistor where a transistor can be operated as a current amplifier and then finally what we have is a current output and a cur voltage input and that's sort of like I over V since that's our output I which is governed by GV1 divided by V1 so that's basically our like acts like a conductance so looking at these dependent sources current controlled voltage source and voltage controlled current source here R is usually called the trans resistance and here the gain G is usually called the trans conductance in previous videos we found that the voltage source acts like a short circuit when it's turned off likewise a current source behaves as an open circuit when it is turned off the same results apply to dependent sources with one important difference that is the dependent sources cannot be turned on and off individually because they dep depend on the input excitation supplied by independent sources so here are some of the consequences of this dependencies when the independent current source is turned on that is the KCL requires that here in this example I1 is equal to IS through the current controlled source action the voltage controlled voltage source is on and its output is VO is equal to RI1 however when the source is off it acts as an open circuit and that the KCL equation that requires I1 equals zero therefore the dependent source is now off and its output is VO equals zero so when the independent current source is off the dependent voltage source acts as a short circuit so the bottom line here is when dealing with linear dependent sources that turning off independent source affects the dependent source as we illustrated here